at Black Hat MEA, that's the Middle East and Africa chapter of Black Hat, I got to sit down with Barry Prost in Saudi Arabia, and we talked about the job market in cybersecurity. Now, Barry Prost is a co-founder of Renter Recruit, and I know what you're saying, Mackenzie, really, are you bringing recruiters onto the show? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Because there is a lot happening in cybersecurity when it comes to the job market. I'm seeing so many conflicting stories about mass layoffs, about people not being able to find jobs, and then at the same time, about this gigantic skill shortage that we're going through. Now, I'm assuming that both are correct, but I don't really understand how both are correct. I don't understand the impact that AI is having on all of this because it doesn't seem to be taking away jobs as much as just redefining them. But Barry is on the pulse with all of this. He knows what companies are looking for right now. He knows how to make candidates attractive. So it was a really fascinating conversation for me to pick his brain a little bit and get to the bottom of what on earth is actually going on in the cybersecurity job market. All right, so we're here in Black Hat MEA or in Saudi Arabia in Riyadh. Uh, I'm here with Barry. We're gonna be talking a little bit about recruitment, employment in uh, the cybersecurity space particularly in this region. So very well, yeah. welcome to the yeah. show. Do you want to give a quick intro? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Thanks so much, uh, Mackenzie. Great to be here. Uh, great to be in Riyadh uh, when the weather's like this. Yeah, very pleasant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm involved with a couple of uh, recruitment brands, uh, Propel Consult and Rent a Recruiter. Really, our core service is providing an embedded recruitment service on a monthly subscription. Um, and one of the key verticals that we're focusing on purely because of the really explosion in demand that we're seeing now and that we're expecting in the cybersecurity space, particularly here in Saudi Arabia. Why do you think that there's been such an explosion in in kind of yeah. the need for cybersecurity professionals, especially here in the, the Middle East. Yeah, sure, uh, sure. Space. I mean, it's a really good question, but we're seeing, I mean, we're seeing really a surge in demand. And a lot of it is to do with the, uh, you know, the migration to cloud associated with the giga projects like Neom that we're involved in, where we placed over 2,000 professionals over the past four years. But look, no, I think we're going to see an increase in investment uh, to $12 billion uh, per annum in, in, in cybersecurity uh, by 2027. And, and that's going to drive just, a, you know, a continued demand for cyber professionals. Yeah. I think when we look at these big infrastructure projects like Neom, like yeah. you're talking sure. about, they get a lot of press and they get a lot, but they're, they're physical. Why, why is cybersecurity such a, a big part of that, that, that you're seeing? Why are they driving such a such a need for this recruitment in this tech space because it feels like it's a physical infrastructure yeah. project primarily, but there's a whole bunch of cloud going on, yeah. a whole bunch of security going on. Yeah, what, for sure. Oh, and I think, I mean, I think what you're seeing generally is just a move, a digital transition, whether it's AI, whether it's banks moving to to fintech and digital banking. And I really think it's just it's associated with, it, with a general uh, digitalization of the economy. And we're seeing that more so in Saudi than, than, than most other places, I think, and that drive and that continued investment. And I think what you see in Saudi is, you know, when they say they're going to do something here, they, they put the money and the investment behind it. So anyone who wants to see how to put on a, a, a an expo should come here, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I want to get into a topic now that's, like, it's a little bit of a misnomer for me. Um, and that is essentially, I'm seeing two things in cybersecurity. I'm yeah. saying, one, we have this gigantic job shortage. Yeah, yeah. And I'm two, I'm seeing a whole bunch of people that seemingly have skills that can't seem to 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 find jobs if you're yeah. in places like Reddit or all that. There's a whole bunch of yeah. really good what, question. A really good question. What's the actual kind of truth behind this? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and and what and why is the why does it seem like there's a yeah. disconnect? Yeah, and I think that's a really good question. And I think it's and I think employers are to blame. Um, I would say I think there's an issue with employers, you know, and their job descriptions with a, too much of an emphasis on unnecessary qualifications and experience. Right. So in other words, to, to put it very simply, you know, they might be looking for um, five years experience and uh, that might not be necessary, you know. So simply kind of making the uh, job descriptions too onerous, too many requirements, too much experience required, not necessarily. That's that's one aspect to it for sure. Um, and I think that's something that, that employers do need to address. And one way that we advocate when we're talking to our clients is really to focus on skills and capabilities rather than requirements and certifications. Um, and I think, you know, that that is the key, you know, you know that, is, that, is, that is a key shift that I think we need to see. We need to see a shift kind of away from the CV and, and more towards the candidate's portfolio. And so we advocate for candidates to, to, to really kind of develop a defender portfolio, if you like, yeah. you know, of what they can do. 
Um, and that's and, and that's not just in cyber. I mean, I think we, we're we're seeing a move to skill based hiring across the broader economy as a, and and employers that adopt a skills based approach have much greater success when it comes to to, to hiring hiring the right people. Yeah, because the other kind of part of that that I see is like in this same question is kind of you have all these certifications. Yeah, that that you have, and I guess. Certifications are, are one way to qualify a candidate easily. Like, yeah, sure. You know, at least in some regard. Yes, well, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily true. What's your take on yeah. certifications? Yeah, look, I mean, I think, um, and I, 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 I don't, and I don't want to say that I, I, you can't dismiss certifications. I think they're genuinely very important. And I think, you know, for candidates at that younger level that I think you talked about, I think my recommendation would be to, to, to look at sort of certifications and definitely to, um, it can be a great pathway into cyber for maybe people who don't have that experience. So certifications, sorry, just noted down so a couple of key ones will be like uh, CISSP, CISM, CISA, um, CIPM, et cetera. So certifications definitely have a have a role to play, especially for that younger cohort looking for a pathway into cyber that maybe don't have the experience, haven't built up the portfolio yet. Yeah, no, I think I think that's good because there's, there's so many. It's hard to choose like the right ones, and it's hard to know if if it's even going to kind of land you land you that job because sometimes it feels like there's a little bit of luck. Certainly, in my experience of entering yeah. into cybersecurity, there's a whole bunch of luck involved. Yeah, sure, and just and just direction. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it is. I agree with what you say that certifications can't be dismissed, but I also kind of hear that it's not the be all and end all. No, you're dead right. And I'd always go back to capabilities, uh, build up your portfolio, um, and really focus on on, the, on that side. I think that is that is critical. You know, yeah. Now it's 2025. Yeah, I can't do a podcast and not talk about AI or on yeah, a deep yeah, platform. Yeah. That's the rules that we yeah. have. Yeah. Well, we we hosted a conference last week on on future of work in Bahrain and pretty much dominated by AI as well. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, every every conference, every podcast, yeah, plays it all, right? I think part of it is that we 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 still don't really have any idea how it's going to affect. Yeah. What are, what is the limit? Like, is there a limit? Are we going to gen gen AI? You know, are you as Elon Musk said, are we all just going to be on the uh, on on? Not, and it no, comes out to work anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Twenty years time, roll it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we. are Let's talk about right now, because that's what yeah. we can talk about yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. Where is AI impacting the job market yeah. right now? Yeah. So I think a couple of key points here, and these points are relevant for cyber and, and outside of cyber as well in the broader workplace. I think, you know, candidates need to be using AI to uh, automate repetitive tasks. Um, I think that's critical. And I think candidates need to upskill in AI. And what we're seeing in the marketplace is that candidates who can use AI generally get better remunerated than candidates who can't. So I think it's more to think of it as as your ally. Think of it in the context of augmented productivity, allowing you to do more, deliver more value for your employer, deliver more value for your clients, and therefore earn more. Yeah. I I, I, I totally agree. And I think there is there was a knee-jerk reaction when AI first came out from security, yeah. which was to push back against it. Yeah. Like yeah. Samsung, for example, they had a breach and that has banned all AI. Yeah. I feel yeah. like that's just an impossible <laughs> task. Or like the, the wrong direction, right? It was like, a, it's like trying to ban the internet in the Naisaki. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need to embrace it, right? Yeah, yeah, I didn't use it properly. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of like new people, this is the, I can, I can only relate this back to me, but when AI first came out and I was using it for my job, I felt like I was cheating. <laughs> I feel like a lot of new people may feel the same way. Yeah. Is that like you kind of like, up, yeah. you know, like it makes you, it makes you feel like you're doing something a little bit naughty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that stigma is completely gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, don't but, get me wrong. I mean, I get, I get emails from colleagues and, uh, you know, there's, there's a bit of a, you know, you can immediately sense, you know, that it's been written by ChatGPT and, and that's quite frustrating because they tend to be very long emails. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that, I think there's a bit of that. And obviously, we, you know, we've heard the, con the, the term AI slop. And uh, so it does need to be used in the right way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think, yeah, it, it needs to be used in, in a smart way, but it can 100%. I mean, it can, it, can, it can increase your efficiency as a worker, like dramatically. Um, and I think AI is not coming for your jobs, but someone who can use AI might. And yeah. that's kind of the message that, that I agree with. Yeah, I feel like I just got a clip from <laughs> <laughs> AI is not coming for your job, but someone that you can use AI. Uh, right, it's like, you might. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, you know, I, I, I really resonate. I really resonate with that and using AI. What are the best, when, when you're, you, you kind of mentioned before that you, you, you help candidates as well as employees kind of find, find this merge. Yeah. When you're talking to a candidate about using AI, what what are you saying to them? Is is like what what are, 
how should they, sure. I'm going into cybersecurity, maybe I have a certification, maybe I have some experience, whatever, but I'm pretty basic. Yeah. What, what is learning or using AI look like in cybersecurity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think very similar to companies on that journey, that, 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 that AI uh, journey that we're on it ourselves. And it's really looking at kind of what are the repetitive tasks in our business that we can use AI to do for us, to allow us to focus on the more strategic work. And I think, I think candidates should think exactly the same way. You know, what are the repetitive tasks in my job that I can, that I can use to automate? So I think it all starts with a workflow. Yeah. You know, like I look at looking at your workflow and writing it down even and, 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 and looking at what tools that you can implement to take, to take that off your plate, basically. Yeah. We're, we're seeing big shifts in the job market and chatting to you just before this, I have kind of a feeling of where we might end up in here, but where are the big shifts in the kind of employment market in terms of uh, geographical locations? Yeah, uh, sure. We're, we've talked about the, the giant need here in Saudi yeah. for, for big security. Yeah. Where, where else are they kind of seeing these demands? And, and where is it quite tough yeah, yeah, to yeah. be a security? You, you yourself, you, yeah. you cover a lot. You're from yeah. Dublin. Yeah. You're, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you kind of got the EU covered. You're here in, yeah, in yeah. the Middle East. You've got offices everywhere. Where, yeah. What are you seeing is where, where's demand surging? Yeah, and oh. disclosure in the US as well. I mean, I think um, there's, there's potentially, uh, if you're talking about, are you talking about location? Are you talking about industry or a bit of both? Let's start with location. Yeah, like physical, yeah, like, like geo, yeah. geological location. Geological, I mean, geographical location, I mean, you couldn't really, uh, you couldn't look beyond, it's very hard to look beyond the Middle East and Saudi Arabia. I mean, there's been such a huge demand driven by the Giga, Giga projects for professionals over the past number of years. I think at one point, I mean, I, I'm going to say, don't quote me on this, I'm aware I'm on a podcast, but I think... <laughs> You know, if I wasn't on a podcast, I think there was some crazy figure like it was sucking up a third of the world's consulting resources, you know, at one point. Like it was just insane, a huge drag in resources. I think that's eased off a little bit now, but we're still seeing, I mean, I, well, like we were chatting before, there's going to be a demand, a shortfall of 50,000 cybersecurity professionals by 2030 in Saudi Arabia. Because what's happening is they think there's 10,000 local talent being produced per, per year, but the demand is increasing by 30,000 per year. Right. So there's a massive there's a massive potential shortfall there uh, coming down the track. So it's very hard to look beyond this region. I think outside of that, you know, over the past uh, number of years, the U.S. has had a very tight employment market, very hard to find talents. And obviously with all the investment, that, that the inward investment now we're seeing in the U.S., I can think that's only going to be exacerbated as well. Yeah. Um, and I know in, in the EU, there's a massive uh, shortage for digital talent too. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're struggling kind of across the board, really, I think, for talent. And what would be... Kind of, if we could, if we could break it down, if there's someone looking, to, looking to kind of maybe let's say that they're established in cybersecurity, they're looking for a career change. Yeah. Like what, what industries are hot? Yeah. Right now, we've talked about location. Like, yeah. Where, where are you kind of see? You've talked a lot about the Giga projects. So I'm assuming yeah. we're gonna. Yeah. We're gonna talk about talk about that, yeah. which is interesting to me because it's yeah, sure. Not my immediate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My immediate thought. Yeah. yeah. But what other industries are you? Yeah, understand? it's very hard to look beyond uh, AI and fintech. Yeah. You know, uh, as two really, really strong areas, really strong growth areas at the moment. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, there's there's the AI company here in in Saudi. Um, you know, that's that's you know, um, you know, recruiting huge amount, uh, a huge amount of staff at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, very hard to look beyond those two sectors. I said, yeah, probably not, not, not all that surprising. No. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, is what we're is what we're hearing. And in terms of kind of the roles if you if you could advise someone looking to get into security that's looking to get out what what type of roles are you seeing providing kind of opportunity yeah in terms of obviously you've got SOC analysts areas like that but there's also like AppSec there's a whole bunch in, in yeah. security we're 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 kind of the roles I guess we could look at different personas we could look at the entry level and we yeah. can look at kind of I mean uh, I, yeah I'd probably say if you're starting off I think you know uh, like like we kind of touched on earlier I think for 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 candidates younger candidates really focusing on that building up that portfolio yeah I think that would be kind of key and then to show their work and kind of and also pick a specialism early i think that's that's kind of important too and whether that's in um you know SOC or DF, dfir or red team or cloud security i think that's that's quite important i think you know the, the generalists you know it probably isn't isn't a role that's that's that widely available i think what's in demand now are for candidates who specialize in certain areas within cybersecurity right interesting and now in terms of profiles that 
maybe want to reach out to you. Let's go of like who who should reach out to to, to you or yeah, your organization right. to try and find in some sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm sending you my profile. What yeah. key things are kind of knocking you off your socks? Going yes. This guy, I'm going to refer. Okay, brilliant. We're great. Well, first of all, please don't send me a CV that you've created with ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. No indexes in there. <laughs> no. Would you like me to uh, smarten this up for you for to send to an employer? Often they leave the prompts in at the end, you know, the ChatGPT prompt, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a dead giveaway, unfortunately, but that still happens. But uh, it's a bit like, you know, back over, back during COVID, you're still on mute, you know, they are on a V, you know, so people are still doing that a little bit, surprisingly. Um, so I think uh, from a candidate perspective, I, I think to go back to what we touched on earlier, we'd love to see from candidates, hear from candidates about what they can actually do, you know. So again, like we'd love to kind of, and, and this is more broadly speaking anyway, we'd love to kind of move away from the CV. Let's face it. I mean, maybe the CV is hopefully done. It's had its day. Yeah. And maybe we can maybe move on. Uh, but we want to see portfolio. We want to see what you can actually do, what your capabilities are, not necessarily just your experience, you know. And I think from a company perspective, we'd love to talk to organizations, obviously, that are looking looking for cybersecurity uh, professionals. We'd love to talk to organizations that are having difficulty, you know, filling those roles. Yeah. Um, we, we can not just help uh, getting bums on seats and sending CVs, but we also try to look at the whole recruitment function for an employer. So look at their reputation online. Look at like uh, how their hiring managers are doing the interviewing um, looking at, um, you know, what their what their brand is like. So I think there's a number of pieces that we can we can help employers with, you know, who are having challenges getting the right people and also keeping the right people. Because let's face it, there's no point hiring in one door if you're losing people at the back door. Yeah. You know? So um, so yeah, that 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 would kind of sum it up from an employer and a and a candidate point of view. But uh, but yeah, happy to chat to anyone um, who who needs any support from an employment perspective. Awesome. Well, yeah. Barry, thanks so much for sitting down yeah, and chat with me. Really great. Yeah, yeah, great to meet you, Ken Mackenzie. Hopefully, we can do it. We can do it again sometime. Do Black Hat 2026. Yeah, all right. Still awesome. Thanks. Okay, great stuff.